All right, guys. It is about that time. Let's all go ahead and get started. My name is Sandy. If we haven't met in person before, I know there are some friends of friends that are joining, some colleagues, some people I know through yoga, some people that may have never met me before, welcome. If you have never done yin yoga before while you are in for a treat, it is a great thing to do on your recovery days or really in a complement to any type of workout that you typically like to do. I'm a runner and a cycler. Um, I played competitive sports for years and this was my hidden secret in all of that. Um, the way yin yoga works, unlike a regular vinyasa or flow class, a traditional yoga class, um, we start with a short meditation. For some of you, that might be the most challenging part, so tune inward. Then we move into our shapes. We'll move through about nine different shapes over the next hour together, and we'll hold each shape for about three to five minutes. It's gonna depend on the shape. Again, you don't need props, but if you wanna snag a pillow, a blanket, it might be nice to have one, but they're not required. At any point, if something doesn't feel right to you, if something hurts, please feel free to adjust to come out of it to find a different shape that feels good to you. I'll be asking you to push yourself to that point of discomfort, but never should that be painful, right? So it's, it's a different kind of sensation. We'll be working on that, being comfortable with the uncomfortable. Pain, not so good. So listen to your body. And I'll be giving lots of ways to modify as we go. So you should be able to find a shape that is good for you. All right, guys. So with that, let's all come to lying down on our backs. Any comfortable reclining position that feels good to you. Maybe you lie all the way down, maybe you bend your knees. And just start to tune inward. I'm gonna sit up so that I can talk you through meditation. And from here, we just breathe. Plain and simple. Maybe you close your eyes, soften your gaze. And just start to ask yourself, how are you? Not really judging your answer, just genuinely, how are you? Maybe today is tiring and you're tired. Maybe you found some hidden joy today being cooped up at home. Maybe you're frustrated or upset in some way. That's totally cool. Whatever it is, however you are, just notice it. And as you ask yourself that question of how you are, if you place one hand on your heart, one on your belly, simply begin to notice your breath, not changing anything, Maybe you start to count the length of your inhales and your exhales. Just noticing the natural cadence of your breath. What is normal for you? Slowly release your hands alongside your body. And we'll simply just start to become aware of different parts of our body as we're lying in this restful state. Starting with the top of the head. Simply notice any sensations or feelings. And ask yourself if you can find somewhere to soften in the head. Maybe that's relaxing the face, the jaw, Letting the face expression be neutral. Maybe you release your tongue off of the roof of your mouth. Just try to soften. Relaxing the neck and the shoulders. Softening through the shoulder blades, consciously telling that part of the belly the body, it's okay to just chill for a moment. 
Relaxing the elbows, forearms, the hands and the fingers. Let them be heavy, let them be soft. Let this be easy. Releasing the chest, the belly, let it relax. Let the hips be heavy, releasing the glutes. Relax your quads, the hamstrings. Maybe softening through the knees, the calves and the shins. Relaxing the feet and the ankles, letting them splay wide if that feels good to you. Letting everything be soft. Let everything be heavy. Just for a moment, be. Without moving, just start to take deeper inhales and deeper exhales. Breathing deeply in through the nose. Exhale, sigh it out through the mouth. Maybe start to wiggle fingers and toes, rolling wrists and ankles. Eventually reaching up and over for a nice full body stretch like you're first waking up in the morning. And on an exhale, roll over onto your left side, the more restorative side of your body, finding fetal position. And when you're ready, gently press up and over into a nice tall seat, any kind of seat that's comfortable. Maybe you sit crisscross applesauce. Maybe you sit my favorite way to sit, which is on my knees. We're gonna move through one short pranayama breath exercise just to stimulate, turn on that parasympathetic nervous system in our body, the system in our body that tells ourselves to calm down, to take a chill pill. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to simply elongate your exhales. So we're gonna move through an exercise together. Feel free to close your eyes during this. No one can see you anyway. You all are looking at me. <laughs> but I feel like it feels nice to close my eyes during this. Maybe you place one hand on your belly, just so you can feel your breath. Not necessary though. So the way this is gonna work, I'll demonstrate. We're gonna breathe in for a count of three. Then we're gonna exhale through purse lifts like you're trying to whistle, so to a count of six. So what it's gonna look like is, and we'll repeat. So we're gonna take one neutral, normal breath together, and then I'll talk you through it, counting you off on your inhales and your exhales. Cool, all right, neutral breath together, inhale, fill up. Exhale, let it go. Begin, inhale, two, Three, exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Last time, inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Let your breath return to normal. Let me notice if you feel a little calmer.
I like to use that trick sometimes before I'm about to present or even before I'm about to teach to a big group. It's a nice little hack. So feel free to grab water if you'd like. We're gonna move into our first shape of the day. We have child's pose, a really nice gentle hip opener. So for child's pose, when you come to the mat, big toes come to touch and knees splay wide. Arms come out in front and forehead meets the mat. Now, as we're gonna be holding this for several minutes, if you have a blanket, it might feel nice to put it underneath your knees to give yourself some cushion. If you're on carpet like me, you might be good to go. So whenever you're ready, we'll all meet in child's pose. One other really nice modification in child's pose, if you want to stretch your arms a little more, bring your palms together, bend the elbows, and hang out right here. So you choose where you need to be. I'll go ahead and meet you there, and we'll be in child's pose. What you'll notice is as you hold the shape over time, you guys can go ahead and go there now. I'll just talk. As you hold the shape over time, even if you're a regular yoga practitioner, it's gonna feel different in our practice of yin. Because as we sit in a shape, right, our goal in yin targets our muscle fascia, that connective tissue and the body that holds everything together. To target that, to really help it release, we have to hold shapes for a long time. So you might go through the whole range of emotions in yin. Might feel good to start off. Something might start to feel uncomfortable. Something might start to feel really uncomfortable, but it is not painful. And then it might start to feel okay again. And by then, usually I'll call you out of the shape. So there's a method to the madness. So again, start to settle in. Just tuning into your breath, not worry about time, I have time. Just tuning inward. A couple tricks are to count your breath. Count the length of your inhales and exhales. Maybe scanning the body. Noticing if you're clenching anywhere in your child's pose. And simply be. Notice if the jaw is clenching, if you're scrunching up your face, see if you can relax just a little bit, maybe even just a micro inch. You might be the only one that notices, but that's okay. Again, if you turned on music, maybe you start to think about the music you're listening to, if that helps you start to settle into the shape. Music can be such a tool. About one more minute in this shape, 
option to adjust anywhere that you need to. Maybe you can take the knees a little wider, sink back a little more. Always the option to wiggle a little bit, right? You don't need to feel like you're static in the shapes. About three more long, deep breaths. Seeing if there's anywhere left that you can release. Slowly begin to rise up and out of this shape. Draw the knees together. Start to lower all the way down onto your back. We're coming in to puddle pose, as we call it in yin yoga. If you do yoga regularly, you might know this as shavasana. We come to the shape between each of our yin yoga asanas to enjoy what's known as the rebound or that sensation of the fascia, the muscle, um, connective tissue, going back to its original location. So what that might feel like to you as you lie down, go ahead and lie down. What that might feel like is a warm sensation, maybe a tingling, maybe a heaviness. Just simply observe in this moment how the body feels. Noticing if anywhere feels heavy or different. And taking note, not judging. Maybe the hips feel slightly heavier. Slowly begin to wiggle fingers and toes and reach up and over for a nice full body stretch. Like you're first waking up in the morning. And I'm gonna exhale, roll over onto your left side and then up into a nice tall seat. And we'll move into our next shape. We have half cow face pose. Now, if you want to do full cow face pose on both sides and know the shape, by all means, be my guest. But because this is an all levels class, I'm trying to make it a little bit more accessible. Full cow face can be a little bit intense. Half cow face, however, is much more accessible. So we're going to bend our right knee. Keep in mind that the camera mirrors me. And we're going to swing it over and across the left leg, just like this. And from here, we simply start to fold forward. And when you can't fold anymore, release the hands alongside the body. Relax this extended foot. Let it be easy. Make sure this back foot is also relaxed. And then release head, neck, and shoulders down, letting the spine curve. Now, there's a tendency for all of us to really want to hold our heads up all the time. For most of us, to release our head fully down, chin is going to touch the chest. Now, if this feels really intense for you, that's where that pillow can come in handy. You can place it on top of your knee. You can stack a pillow and a blanket. Or you can even just sit up a little bit more and then drop the head up there to take a bit of tension off. So wherever you decide you need to be, start to settle in. 
Really letting this be about the lower body. See if you can make the upper body, the head, neck, and shoulders heavy. And I'm right there with you. Noticing if tension's already creeped back into those feet. See if they can relax. See if you can soften the face. Let the eyes relax, no furrowing of the brow. Can your shoulders be heavy? You know, notice as we sit in the shape for about a minute already, the body might start to open up. If that's the case, feel free to fold further. It feels good to you. Okay, we're not static in these shapes, even though we're holding still for a while. It's very different than being static. Noticing if you're holding the head up. And ask yourself, do you need to? Is there anything to look at? I promise you there's not. <laughs> And if as you start to fold, your head meets this bent knee, it's okay to let it relax on the knee. Let it be heavy. Scanning the body for any areas of tension. And asking yourself, do you need to hold on to that tension? Or maybe you can let it go. About one more minute on this side. One little last bit of opportunity to release, to find ease. Scanning the body for anywhere that feels sticky, tight. Maybe you just think about sending your breath there, using the inhales to create space so that with your exhales, you can sink a little deeper. Slowly begin to rise up, walking the hands to help you sit all the way up. Unbend this knee, extend the leg long. We'll move to the other side before we go into our puddle pose. This time bending the left knee, bring it over and across and drop that knee down, setting up for half cow face pose on the other side. So again, if you chose to do full cow face, just go ahead and switch out your legs, whichever ones were on the bottom. We're gonna take the easier route if you're with me. Not really easier, slightly easier. So go ahead, relax the extended legs foot, have your hands alongside the body, start to walk yourself forward until you find your edge. And then from there, drop the head, neck and shoulders down. Letting the spine curve, right? In a regular yoga class, we tend to try and keep a straight spine as we fold. It's okay here to let the spine curve. Maybe you flip the palms facing up so that the shoulders can relax. And from here you stay, letting gravity do the work. Well, you just breathe.
And you've been here for about a minute. Maybe you sink a little deeper by walking the hands forward so you can fold a little more. Maybe you just simply adjust, shifting your weight a little bit. Scanning the body once again. Seeing if there's any areas of tension you can let go that you can release. Thinking about your breath as a tool, using your inhales to create space, and your exhales to sink a little deeper. Maybe the forehead meets that knee. Let it rest there if that's the case. About one more minute on this side. Seeing if there's anywhere else you can let go. Maybe you tune into your music if you're listening to some on your end. Maybe you just tune into your breath. Slowly start to rise up and out of the shape, uncrossing the legs, sending both of them out long as you lower down onto your back for puddle pose. Noticing where you feel this in the body this time around. Maybe you close your eyes. Just simply observe. We're here just for about a minute. So take note of any sensations you feel in the body from those two stretches. Slowly start to wiggle fingers and toes. Reach up and over for a nice full body stretch. And then roll over onto your left side, moving through fetal position and up into a tall seat. Moving on to our next shape. Let's work on our arms a little bit. My most necessary and least favorite thing to do. For those of you that don't know me personally, I played softball competitively for a long time. So I have really tight shoulders still from that. It's been years and yet it prevails. So this, these shapes that we're about to do, I have a love-hate relationship with. Go ahead and come down all the way onto your belly. 
Now from here, reach your left arm up like you're reaching for something 45 degrees away, just like this. You're gonna lower all the way down onto your left cheek. Plant the right palm down by bending the elbow. And from here, you can bend the right foot, press into the right palm, and start to peel open woo, until you feel it on your left shoulder. Your head can release down to the mat. Now, if you're like me and are super tight, my foot's just gonna hang out here the whole time. Now, maybe you can flip all the way over and plant that right foot down on the ground behind you. I can do that. <laughs> so, if that's you, go for it. If not, hang out right here and start to settle in. A nice deep chest opener, shoulder opener. If you did the HIIT workout with me yesterday, this should feel really nice. Maybe you close your eyes in this shape. This is the shape especially, you'll start to notice as we sit in it that you will start to open up and this foot that is lifted behind you will slowly start to creep down to the ground. Yeah, see, look, I can touch the ground now. Using your breath, especially if this is intense. Noticing if you're clenching anywhere in the body, particularly in the glutes, we tend to squeeze our butts when we are uncomfortable. And see if you can release that. About one more minute on this side. Seeing if there's anywhere else you can release, let go of tension. Maybe you can relax the face a little bit. Letting this be about the chest, the left arm. Two more breaths. Slowly pull back on to your belly. Draw that left arm back in. Then you give it a shake. That was a deep stretch. We'll move on to the other side. This time, lowering down to our bellies, reaching that right arm. I'm gonna adjust a little bit to give myself some room. Reaching that right arm up, like you're reaching for something about 45 degrees away, just like this. Plant the left palm on the ground alongside you. Lower all the way down onto your belly and onto that right temple. Bend the left knee. Start to press into the left palm as you peel yourself open until you feel a stretch on the right shoulder. Again, that foot might hang out in the air. That's totally cool. It might meet the ground behind you. Or maybe you're like me and you found the wall. So wherever you need to be, start to settle in. You should feel this in the chest, in the shoulder. Knowing you can always adjust in your body to take some tension off. Put some tension on. The shape's gonna look really different for everybody. It's gonna look really different from side to side. My right side is way tighter than my left side. And that's okay.
Tuning into the breath again. Noticing where you're feeling this the most. Is it tighter in your chest or in your shoulder joints? Noticing if the body's opened up. Right as we hold these shapes, that connective tissue starts to expand. Oh, one more minute on this side. Two more breaths. And slowly. Start to peel out of the shape. Coming back onto your belly. We'll take puddle pose on our bellies this time. So lowering all the way down to the ground, turning one cheek to one side. And simply notice for a few breaths how those shapes made you feel. Maybe you feel a tingling sensation near the shoulders, maybe a warmth. If you feel nothing, that's totally cool too. Just simply observe. Slowly start to move up and out of the shape by bringing the palms underneath the shoulders, pressing up and back, and finding a nice tall seat. We're going to move into our next shapes. We have pigeon. So if you know pigeon pose and want to get into it, we're going to start with the right side first. I'm going to demo two different variations. So for traditional pigeon, we come onto all fours. We bring our right knee behind the right wrist. Throw this right foot over and across. Not worried about if it's parallel or not. Make sure this back knee is down and start to shimmy the back knee back further and further and further and further and further until you find pigeon pose. I need to scoot up a little bit. There we go. So you find pigeon pose, just like this. So from here you have options. You can come down to your forearms and drop the head. It's a really nice option. You can lower all the way down to your belly. That's another really nice option. Now, maybe this whole situation is not working for you. Totally cool. Meet me on your back. We'll take a modified pigeon and turn sideways so you can see me. So from your back, knees are bent, feet are planted firmly on the mat, lift this right leg up, swing the right foot over and on top of the left thigh. From here, lift the left leg up, reach behind the left thigh, relax this left foot. No need to hold it up in the air. And simply use the strength of your arms to draw the left leg closer to your body. You should feel it on this outer part of your leg. So you choose either the reclining variation on your back where I am, or you can take traditional pigeon. Both are stretching the same part of the body. And from here, you breathe. Close your eyes and you start to tune in. We all tend to hold a lot in our hips a lot of emotions, a lot of stress. 
Maybe this is the time where you don't need to hold on to everything. Maybe you pick one thing to let go of. Letting the face be relaxed. Let this be about the lower body. Give the head, neck, and shoulders a break. Oh, one more minute on this side. If there's any other variations you like of pigeon, by all means, feel free to go there now. I'm going to stay right here. Using this last bit of opportunity to release some tension. Knowing that sometimes this practice of yin yoga is deceiving, right? People see it and they think, oh, calm stretching, how lovely. And if you've done a class and if you've done it right, it is stretching, but calm it's not. It's hard sometimes to sit in these sensations that are uncomfortable. And that's a practice too. Slowly start to move out of pigeon on the right, either on your back, simply switching your legs out, or if you took the traditional pigeon, starting to move to pigeon on the other side. So if you're on your back, the left foot goes on top of the right thigh, lift that right thigh up, relax the right foot down. Don't hold it up in the air. And use the strength of your arms to draw this right thigh towards you. If you're taking the traditional version from all fours, you draw the left knee behind the left wrist, swing that left foot over, shimmy the right knee back, and then start to settle in, either staying up here, maybe lowering down to the forearms, maybe dropping the head, and simply breathing, finding some ease. Noticing if you're holding the head up, especially if you're taking traditional pigeon, even if you're up on the forearms, let the head sink down. Again, using that practice of being soft. Knowing it's just as important of a skill to learn to be soft and gentle as it is to be strong. For many of us, it's harder, actually.
scanning the body again. About one more minute on this side. Options for any second variations you might like. Scanning the body to find somewhere to soften, anywhere. Slowly start to lift up and out of the shape. Moving onto your back, taking your time, no rush. Legs extended long, lowering all the way down. Finding our puddle pose just for a minute so we can scan the body and observe how that shape made us feel. Maybe the hips feel heavy, warm. Maybe they feel light. The shape makes everybody feel different. Just notice. Slowly start to wiggle fingers and toes, wiggling wrists and ankles. Lift the arms up and over. Nice full body stretch. And then draw the knees into the chest. Rock up into a nice tall seat. Moving on to our last shape. So from here, you might need to move from your mat, find a wall, a door, even a surface that comes up about bed height off of the ground is good. We're gonna do a really nice, totally supported inversion, legs up the wall, or in this case, legs up the random surface in your home. So I'm gonna turn to my door. And the way this is gonna work, Come parallel alongside whatever surface you choose, bringing your booty as close as you can towards it. Great. Now from here, start to turn yourself down as you start to lift the legs up. You might have to do some shimmying. And simply lift your legs up, placing them against the surface. Inversions are really, really nice for the circulatory system that spends all day pumping blood through our limbs, kind of gives it a break. And simply do whatever feels good with your hands. They can come alongside you. They can rest on your belly. If you want an additional shoulder stretch, you can bring them up and over, maybe grabbing for opposite elbows. You choose. Maybe you close your eyes and just enjoy this nice inversion. Maybe noticing how the legs feel. 
taking note of what that sensation is. Feeling good about this time today that you've carved out for yourself. Knowing that it's good sometimes to slow down. It's hard for us, but it's so important. Notice the tensions creeped back into the face, especially or the shoulders. See if you can soften. Maybe letting go of the tongue at the roof of the mouth again. Consciously letting the eyes relax. Letting everything be heavy. Letting gravity pull it down. Maybe noticing what you can hear around you. Maybe it's your music. Maybe you hear your family and your home. Maybe you hear traffic outside like me. Let this be easy. But one more minute in this shape. Using this last little bit of opportunity to practice letting go, finding ease and discomfort. Slowly start to draw the knees into the chest one at a time. Give yourself a little squeeze. And then find your way onto one side, pressing up and over into a nice tall seat. If you're like me and need to find your way back onto your mat, go ahead and do so. And we'll settle in for our last shape, Shavasana. Again, one of the harder shapes for some people I know. Shavasana can be both relaxing or challenging. So you can take Shavasana, that resting shape corpse pose on your back or even on your belly. It's a really nice option. It's very grounding. Um, so you choose. I'm actually going to take it on my belly. So start to move into your final resting shape. And don't worry about the time. Just simply be for a few minutes.
slowly without moving. Just start to deepen your inhales, deepen your exhales. Using the full lung on your inhales and letting it go on the exhales. One more deep breath in. Exhale, side out. Maybe you start to wiggle fingers and toes, rolling wrists and ankles. If you're on your belly, maybe you bend the knees and windshield wiper your legs from side to side. And when you're ready, slowly start to press up either through fetal position or if you're on your belly through child's pose into a nice tall seat. We'll all meet with our eyes closed, our hands at our heart in prayer. We end all classes, all of my classes at least, with one breath. Inhale, fill up. Exhale, sigh out. Bring your hands to your forehead. The third eye, as we call it in yoga, the seat of your intuition, and bow forward, sailing your practice. Thank you guys so much for joining from wherever you are in the world. This was a 60 minute yin yoga class. Thank you for those that tried something new. Yin yoga is different. May not be for everybody, but I think it is. Tomorrow uh, in the morning, actually at 8 a.m., I'm doing a all levels flow, a much more high energetic um, yoga class. On Saturday, I have a hit class. On Sunday, I have a yin yoga for athletes. So if you're a runner, a cycler, know anybody that is, those are all um, great options, especially the last one. Um, all the info is on Facebook, Instagram. Um, and again, these classes are free, but I am accepting donations, which I am then donating um, to the Washington Humane Alliance, or I'm sorry, the Humane Rescue Alliance. They changed their name. That's the Humane Society here, where I adopted my two kitty cats from. Um, and the other half is going to Yoga Heights Yoga Teachers Fund, which is supporting uh, full-time yoga teachers, so people that aren't like me that have another job. Um, these are teachers that rely on teaching for income and are unfortunately unable to teach right now in studios because they are closed. Um, so again, you can donate via my Venmo. Um, hopefully I'll see you guys on the mat tomorrow or in some of the days after. Thank you so much for tuning in.